Hi, peace and blessings everyone. We trust everyone is doing well. Um, usually when we talk of honoring the ancestors, people get a lot of misconceptions and people come insulting us that it's all evil and devilish and all that. But I think in the first place, the question you should ask yourself is, if my mom or dad or even any relative died that was very close to had good relations with a person, would I want to forget about that person just because the person is no more living? Let's say if I have pictures with that person or I have lots of memories of them, maybe clothes or something, would I just want to discard everything just because the person is dead and no more? And I guess the answer is no. And uh, I think when we talk of even honoring their ancestors, I realize Christians do it more than anybody else, you know, even though they don't realize that's exactly what they are doing. And yet come around to tell us whatever we are doing is devilish or fetish or whatever. First of all, when a Christian dies, it, irrespective of whether they died at home or the, at the hospital, the first thing they do is that they embalm the body and put in the mob. The point is, if you don't honor the person who is dead, when they die, why don't you just go and throw it somewhere <laughs> in the ground somewhere, cover it and move on with your life? But you spend so much money first to put a person in the mug. Then some spend months, you know, some can go as much as three, four, even one year just planning because they want to make sure before they bury the dead person, everything is kind of okay and cool. Once again, I ask, if you don't honor the dead person, why would you want to put in so much preparation running into months? And then even finally to do the burial, you know, they get a uh, morticians to come and bath the dead body, beautify the dead body. If you're a female, you are lucky. <laughs> you are going to wear some <laughs> wedding gown with makeups and some wig lying in states um they decorate their place you know some funerals even look like birthday parties because there's so much food water and drinks and all that so the question once again if you don't honor the dead why is it that when people die you just don't throw them away but you make sure you give them a befitting barrier sometimes it's even surprise you that people who didn't have anything and were basically living very poor lives when they die somehow christians managed to borrow money to have elaborate um, funeral ceremonies for them even at the cemetery you realize that they um they kind of beautify the place where they are going to put this dead body they put on flowers and all that and even for the funeral some go to the extent of um you know we have this cloth like um going for a cloth that everybody can wear to signify the funeral of the person and then finally when it's one year of the time when the person had passed on from this war the christians who go back to church to thank god for protecting their lives you know and the family and all that and still have some party to honor the person that is dead the point is if you don't honor the dead why do you have to do all these ceremonies for somebody that has died so how does it make it different from what we are doing? But we are saying that when a person died, even though the body is gone, somehow the energy is still living on around us. So let's say my grandmother was a businesswoman before she passed away. Somehow, whether she left a legacy I'm benefiting from or not, let's say I'm even benefiting from that legacy, then every day I would want to honor my grandmother in my memory as a way of thanking her for the legacy she left for me. On the other hand, if she didn't leave any legacy because of ignorance or something, and she didn't even know what she had to do in life, when I honor the energy or the memory of my ancestor or my grandma, basically what I'm saying is that whatever she couldn't complete in this life, that one way or the other has been passed on to my DNA by remembering her, let that uh, energy be activated so I can continue the good work that she did or she couldn't even do. How does this sound so difficult for us to understand? And the point is we have been so brainwashed that things that are so very close and so normal to us, and should be a normal part of our life, we rather term as devilish and demonic. But somehow, if it is done in church, it kind of looks okay. So for me, it's been a very beautiful experience moving on this spiritual um, awakening journey. 
I learn every day and it's just a wonderful feeling, you know. And the beautiful part is once you start, there's no end to what you can learn, what you get to know every day. So to all those who've made this beautiful transition on the awakening journey, I say congratulations to you. And for many more and for many more who are still having doubts in their hearts, I guess this video will help to wake up your memory so you can remember who you are and you can do the things that will bring you peace, joy and happiness. Okay, all the blessings.